What's up, Eagles fans? Welcome into Inside Training Camp presented by Independence Blue Cross. I'm Fran Duffy. Joining me is going to be Ross Tucker. Today, we're going to talk through some Eagles. We're going to talk about what we expect to see here in training camp this summer. We're going to talk a little food with Ross Tucker as I welcome in my buddy Ross. Congrats, man. We made it. The football's back. I can't believe it. It happens like that. And this is nice, man. You yeah. should have a suit and tie on. Nothing wrong with suit and tie, but I, I like the t-shirt. This is comfy. Do, should I say, like, congrats? Like, are you at the point in your life where it's like, oh, like football? Or is it like, oh, man, like football? Balls back. Always mixed emotions. Yeah. Sa- same, honestly, as a player. Sure. Uh, I-, I love football. I'm so excited for the preseason games, Eagles preseason games. All my buddies texting me and everybody. And and this and to see, it's almost like when you have all these rookies and some of these free agents, it's like op- almost opening gifts yep. to see what you have. Uh, you know, it- it's a grind too, right? Just like the players. Sure. I mean, I travel every weekend away from my family. But... I'm traveling to games. Yes. And I'm, I'm getting paid to go to games. Everybody else in the stadium is paying to be there. I'm getting paid to go to them. So I'm more excited than uh, than dreading the travel a little bit. Well, you talk about how it's changed since you were a player. A lot of things have changed since you were a player. I don't know like if you were showing up. Like, did you have outfits for, hey, you know what? Day one of training camp, this is how I'm going to show up to work? I don't remember training camp entrances being a thing, yeah. whether it's like the vehicle they come in or their attire, but it absolutely is a thing now I, in the NFL. I was going to say, it is now. Yeah. To take a look at some of these Eagles. Is this something that you feel like you could have pulled off? You check out some of these offensive linemen. I, I don't know, Ross. Like, If you had tried this, I don't know that any of us would have recovered. Uh, I, yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> this I, I can do it with the t-shirt underneath. That looks a little bit better. And I like it's unbuckled there. Yeah. What were, you, what were you driving these days? Uh, my first two years, I had my 1990 Jeep Cherokee because I thought it might be my only year. <laughs> if I looked like Jordan, I don't think I'd ever wear a t-shirt ever. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. wear anything. I mean, that, look at that guy. That goes without saying. And look Landon. at Landon. People don't realize how big Landon Dickerson is. Well, because Jordan next to him, but Jordan is, is a mutant. I mean, he's just built like somebody you don't normally see guys that look like this. Unbelievable. I, where do you get those things? They almost look like pajamas. Honestly, it it's might like be pajama a, overalls. <laughs> well, it's uh, obviously look. It's like the first day of school for a lot of these guys. And honestly, like our, our social team kind of took that to the next level uh, and had these guys fill I saw out some, some questions. Yeah, so I mean, this is outstanding. So outstanding. I love that Lane wants to be a wrestler when he grows up. Skydive jumper for BG. That surprises me a little bit. Lawyer. Dallas Goddard wants to be a lawyer. That's interesting. Uh, he can make that happen. AJ Brown, astronaut. I can see that. A lot of guys said astronaut. I actually asked the social team if that was like, if they all came in together and said it. And no, they said no. They, those guys oh, all. I love room. mama. That's awesome. AJ Brown picks sour Skittles. Nicole Beans is his mom. <laughs> 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 a little different. Another astronaut. Yeah, that's what, no, I'm telling you, I like four or five guys. I have no desire whatsoever to go to space. To head up? No. A lot of UFO news uh, this week. I'd rather be Superman. Superman would be awesome, like yeah. Reed Blankenship. He could actually play Superman like in a TV show or a movie. Well, look, you're talking about how you would answer. I want to put this to the test. I've got, I've got the board with us here, and I want to ask, I want to ask you these. So, you're, uh, how many, how old are you right now? Forty-four. Forty-four. Yeah. Okay. If Too I old to be playing to work. football. Yes. Man, all right, we're we're in good shape already. This board <laughs> doesn't even work. All right, I love my daughters. Okay. And what do you want to be when you grow up? Um. I want to be exactly what I am. Are you allowed to say that? Yeah, I think so. I want so. to be a broadcaster. I don't know. I want to be Mike Quick when I grow up. I've always, I've said that for years. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I guess the players have to come up with something else they want to be when they're done playing. But for me, I, I want to keep doing this forever. Here you go, man. Congrats. Thank you. How many years? So this is your fourth season doing uh, training camp now during preseason? Yeah, well, fifth year, but they, the COVID year they didn't have. They didn't sure, have so it would have been your fifth so. year, fourth preseason. Yeah, fifth year, fourth preseason. Can't wait. Love the pre... Look, there was four undrafted free agents that made the team last sure. year. Sure, yeah. You, you got to watch the preseason games and pay attention. because Reed Blankenship, we just showed him, Yeah, might be a starting safety. Undrafted free agent last year that nobody knew about, and he came out of nowhere to make the best roster in the NFL. I believe he was the undrafted guy who received the least amount of guaranteed money, too. So, yeah. like, he was, the, like, the longest of long shots. Yeah. And picks off Aaron Rodgers in his first defensive <laughs> snap. Um, you had memory. I mean, this isn't your first training camp, obviously. You were going to Eagles training camps when you were a kid, right? Yeah, um, loved it. Yeah. Loved it. You know, I highly recommend it to anyone uh, that can get invited and come or even the open practice. It's a rare opportunity, Fran, 
to get that close to the players. And we were just showing the video of my lot at Atlanta and actually see how big they are. Yeah. I can remember, Fran, I knew the players so well that when they would come off, even like the guys other people didn't know, like Ron Heller, Dennis McKnight, can you please sign this? Nobody else knew like the old lineman's name. Yep. So they would walk and then they'd hear me say their name. Dennis McKnight was like year 12. He stopped, came right over to me because I knew his name. But to, to see Keith Byers and Keith Jackson up close and Randall Cunningham and Reggie White. I remember one time we were driving into Westchester. It started to rain, so Keith Jackson had to put the top up on his uh, yep. Jeep. So I pulled over and got his autograph there as he's putting the top of the cover on his Jeep. Just awesome. Who was awesome. your who was like your hero uh, from the from those days? Randall Cunningham. Randall. Yeah, yeah Randall Cunningham is my favorite football player ever. I mean, you're a little bit younger. Yeah. But my first football game I ever went to was at the vet. Yep. And Ron Jorsky was starting quarterback. But on third and long, they would bring in Randall. And it was the most entertaining thing ever. He would either throw a touchdown or run around or throw a pick or whatever. Um, you know, as exciting as any player is in the NFL now, Lamar Jackson, Mahomes, that's what Randall Cunningham was late 80s, early 90s during the, the peak of my fandom. Well, it's just awesome, the access you had to these players. And for the, the fans that do come here to the Novacar Complex to uh, experience training camp, this is what they're seeing uh, as we take a look now uh, at the tour. This is what it looks like when you come down to the Novacar Complex for a look at training camp. Uh, the, you got this car here. I don't know. Is this how I you got that. here? Is this how you got here today? No, but I want that bad. I want to drive that around at the beach. It might be Merrill's car. We we'll we'll <laughs> take a look at the uh, the helmets here, the Kelly Greens. Though we'll be getting a look at yeah. those here coming up. Uh, F, the Chelsea FC. Uh, they, this is actually where they are stationed throughout their entire tour here in America, Ross. Not just oh, here for Philly. That. Yeah, it's very cool. They've been here uh, for the last week or so. They're still here for a few more days. You can see the soccer lines still out on the practice field for the next few days. And then the most important part. Yeah. Yes. Go to flavor. Mango gelati. Mango, Mango gelati. I got blue raspberry all day. Uh, WIP van. We saw the WIP trailer there. Another look here at the practice fields. Beautiful. So this is field three right here on this side alongside these tents. Right now, again, Chelsea is, is taking over field three. So the Eagles will be practicing more on this field in the next couple weeks. But uh, this is what it looks like. This is where the team is going to be practicing for these next few days. You got some more tents here. There's a look at the complex. Uh, the Citizens Bank Park and the Lincoln, and Lincoln Financial Field off in the distance here. Now you get some more tents. Ross, this is where all the action happens, man. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I oh, there he is. There's Merrill. <laughs> Merrill's going to be joining us uh, here next week. Merrill, his car's parked out front, so he's heading out that way. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I can't wait to talk with Merrill next week. What a legend, man, that he's still doing it and still doing awesome. Oh, he absolutely is. We're, we're going to have some fun uh, with Merrill next week. He is not a rookie, but one guy who is a rookie, uh, Nolan Smith, uh, Jalen Carter, a lot of these guys. Uh, what is going through their mind now as they're getting ready for their first training camp? You know, it's... They're really, there's a lot of anxiety. There's excitement, but deep down, they're curious to see just how good they are, mm. just how hard it is. Yeah. Because you, you really don't know. You have your other guys tell you what the NFL is like or whatever, but then when you actually get to there, I think they're anxious to see what they can do against some of these veteran players. And they'll find out pretty quickly how high of a level they're at now and the adjustments they need to make to be as productive in the NFL as they were in college. They clearly have the physical ability. It's yeah. why they got drafted so high. Now they need to figure out how to practice, how to perfect their craft, how to learn from the vets so that they can be productive players here as rookies. So when you were a rookie, and obviously you wouldn't have admitted this in the moment, yeah. but what were you more intimidated by? Was it the veterans that were there or was it like the coaches and the scheme and like that side of it? What, what was a scarier prospect in your mind? I think, I, I think the scariest aspect of it was just going to be how physically grueling and demanding it was. Yeah. I didn't really know what to expect. And my rookie year, Fran, we had Marty Schottenheimer. So it was the first like 12 days were two, three hour padded practices, inside run. I mean, I tore my right MCL the fourth day. I came back, I broke my hand. I remember saying to my parents, like, I really hope I make the team this year. Because I'm never going to be able to play another season. Yeah. I, I remember thinking of the double-digit vets thing, being like, how do these guys do this every year? I had a tough time even just getting to that first training camp physically. Yeah, it's a, it's a grind, obviously. And a lot of those guys getting ready to embrace that. 2001 was your first one. It happened to be the first year or the year that Nolan Smith, the Eagles' first-round pick, was born. Oh born God. in 2001. He, a couple of days after he was drafted, he joined Jeremiah Washburn here in studio. And they talked about some of the 2001 trivia that might have gone over Nolan's head. 
Who was the number one overall draft pick in 2001? That was the year I was actually born. So I know. I wasn't alive, but I mean, it was a quarterback. Oh, I just seen, hold on, wait, don't tell me. So Michael Vick, my, it, it was Michael Vick. I just seen a poster that said 2010. So I said I was nine and Michael Vick played in the league. No, so that's past Vic. No, I can't. No, you had it. Just stick it with what you had. It was Michael, Michael Vick. Vick. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was Michael Vick. Well, I mean, you kind of got it. Um, <laughs> how old was Jason Kelsey in 2001? Minus nine. I mean, no. He 30. <sighs> he was 14 years old. Really? Yeah. Where was Nick Sirianni in 2001? Coaching. No, he was actually playing. He was a receiver at Mountain Union. He was a oh. receiver at Mountain Union. Yeah, he talked about that this He morning. did, but he didn't say 2001. Um, what was the number one movie in 2001? Back to the Future. Oh my gosh, that's a terrible answer. No, I'm sorry. That's not a terrible answer. Uh, it is. No, it was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. No, I mean, I didn't know any of them. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, Coach. The fact that Nolan Smith thought that Back to the Future came out in 2001, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can get over that. I don't know if I can get over that. I, I mean, I guess if you're born in 2001, you wouldn't have any idea. But no, it's like mid-80s. Yeah, though. it was before like I was born. I was born in 86. I'm pretty sure it was 84 uh, when that one Sounds came out. Sounds about right, yeah. 45. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I can get over that one. Well, uh, Nolan comes into a room with... Brandon Graham, Hassan Reddick, uh, Josh Sweat, a lot yeah. of veterans. Uh, what was it like for you as you were that veteran guy you know, in that room for those young guys coming in? Well, uh, it's so beneficial to have a group of vets like those guys have. You know, I know when I was a young guy, I followed those guys around. John Jansen, Corey Raymer, Dave Zott, Ben Coleman, Matt Campbell. I still remember all of them. Mm. And I just watched what they did and tried to mimic them and learn from them as a sponge as much as I could. And then Fran, when I was a vet, I returned the favor. Yeah. You know, I showed the guys the things I thought was important in terms of taking care of your body, going in the cold tub after practice, every day after every workout, the extra film work that you do. You know, I, I never left the facility until I watched every rep I had that day because I, I couldn't sleep that night unless I, I got a chance to see what I did yep. and then know what I could do to improve the next day. It's, it's a big step up in terms of professionalism. Now, these guys all come with great reputations as far as that's concerned, yeah. but it's, it's not college anymore. This is your full-time job. Well, that's it. I mean, we talked about like the mindset of a rookie. I mean, the mindset of a vet, that's going to that's gonna change and evolve too, right? I mean, you played seven, seven years in the yeah. NFL. How many of those seven did you feel like completely 100% safe in training camp? Well, what's interesting for me is all seven years I was battling. Mm. So two years, I think, I was battling for a starting spot. Okay. My second year and my fourth year. So I kind of knew I was on the team. You're on the team, right. But I was battling for a starting spot. Every other year, well, my fifth year, I thought I was battling for a starting spot, I ended up getting cut. But um, every other year I was battling for a roster spot. But how do you, how do you like manage that emotionally and mentally? You know, make sure you're executing at high, a high uh, peak. Fran, it's a great question. It's really, really difficult. Because at night, they always say to you, you know, control, worry about the things you can control. It, it makes me laugh when people say that. When you're lying in bed at night, you are thinking about the numbers. Yeah. You are thinking about how many guys they're going to keep. You know they're keeping these five, six, seven offensive linemen. You know you're battling against these other two. Ultimately, all you can do is go out there and perform to the best of your ability. I will say what's very different and helpful now it's just how big the practice squad is. Right. Yep. You know, with 16 spots, it used to be five. If you're a good player, the Eagles are going to find a way to keep you as one of the 69 guys. 53 active roster, 16 practice squad. Well, you talk about you know being up at night. Well, five different teams. I'm sure it was different. But what was like the roommate situation uh, for you in those training camps? Very varied. Okay. I had a guy my rookie year. The worst snorer I've ever <laughs> heard in my life. So you're up stressing and then you can't even sleep regardless. It's my rookie year. <laughs> I, it's like the most important night's sleep of my life. I went down to the front desk and got him to give me a different room 
I was like, this is the most important night sleep of my life. And this guy is the loudest snorer I've ever heard in the world. You can't was, have a snore. You need your rest. Is there a great roommate, though? What's, what's the profile of a great roommate in training camp? Just quiet and doesn't snore and doesn't talk to you and just lets you rest. <laughs> Who would you like to room with on the Eagles? Uh, my lot or Kelsey. Yeah, that's I easy, mean, those guys are both just unbelievable. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, when you're looking at, at how all of those guys kind of go about their business, and we get it off, you know, you look, check out, by the way, Eagles Unscripted, uh, outstanding uh, on the Eagles YouTube page. Make sure you go check that out. But a lot of personality uh, on this Eagles team. No question. They're awesome. Yeah, Jordan Mailata, Jason Kelsey, easy answers. Well, there's one thing we know about you, Ross, and that's you love food. And lucky for you, uh, we have someone here that's going to help us go behind the scenes of the Eagles cafeteria. That man is the director of food services, Eric Montijo. Eric, thanks so much for joining us here. This is your, your sixth camp. You got to be excited. Exciting and terrifying. Yeah. Because um, our you know off season goes really quick, and then um, you know training camp comes up, and it's like especially this year coming off the Super Bowl. It seemed like we had like pretty much no off season, and then we were right back in the training camp, and you know we put in so many hours. Our kitchen staff were here as long as the team is here, so you know our guys are pulling in like 13 to 16 hour days sometimes. So it is fun because we're excited because the season's starting, but we're also like you know gonna miss our family for like the whole month. <laughs> and, so. and obviously you go from the summer where things are really light to all right, all the players are in. It's a full 90 man roster. How much food gets made on a typical day in training camp? So um, number wise, like we I know we go through almost 400 actual cracked eggs um for breakfast <laughs> so like our, we get um farm fresh eggs um and we also use liquid eggs i'm not even counting the liquid eggs that we have but we go through that much you know just for breakfast you know these guys are eating like six to eight egg omelets i've seen jordan my lot of order breakfast like uh, he's he accounts for oh, like his, a, a tenth of that his right? omelet is ridiculous <laughs> he actually has two versions of his omelet uh, i don't even want to tell you like the biggest one but like he's usually around like six or eight yeah but it's crazy but um we also i mean we, depending on the, the year, like last year, we went through a lot of red meat. And it depended on the team, like we went through, a, like our most production was like salmon one year. And we were going through training camp, I think it was like over 75 pounds of salmon a day. <laughs> um, and then for a, a funny fact, last year, actually, me and James, Chef James, we did the math and we actually ate 3,600 cows when you count it, like the amount of beef that the guys consumed throughout the year. <laughs> so it's crazy. We, you know, it's a lot of numbers and we're still feeding the front office staff as sure. well. And, you know, surprising enough, they eat a lot too. And, you know, we always joke around. I've talked talk to a friend about it too. The front office staff can eat. No, doubt, no question. <laughs> yeah. especially, especially when this guy's in the yeah, building. Hey, well, first Russell. of all, they, they deserve it because they've done a great job. <laughs> I'm going to fanboy out a little bit here. I'm a huge fan, bro. Huge fan. I would rather talk to you about the cafeteria over there than any player about football. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that or not, but uh, I adore the Eagles cafeteria. I played for five teams. You guys have by far the best cafeteria that I've ever been at in terms of the myriad of options and the healthy options. I have a question. Are you like competitive about it? Like, do you think about the fact oh, that absolutely. this is, this is, I am helping the team win. I want to be better than the Cowboys. I want to be better than the Giants. Yeah, we um, actually were tied for first with the Dallas Cowboys when it came to sports nutrition and food. So that- From the know, player rankings? Yes. Okay. And um, we, we got an A. We have really good chefs on our staff. We have um, Matt who does our action station. He's amazing. So, I mean, we, we keep doing our thing. Um, me and James in the off season, we actually went to California for a food show. And we do a lot of uh, sourcing and getting new products in every year. So it's just like not being stagnant and like just going out there and seeing what's trending in foods and like what's trending in Philly. We go to restaurants and do a little RNA. So like we always are looking for new products. So that's how we stay on top. So, okay, so here's the question. How do you balance taste and flavor and health, right? So you guys do the best job of anywhere I've ever been of it's delicious, but it's like salmon and healthy stuff. We, I don't get that at my house. No offense, honey. I don't get that at my house. <laughs> so we work hand in hand with the sports nutrition team and Steph and Mike do a great job of uh, not handcuffing us pretty much because 
the biggest thing is you want the player to eat here because you know what products they're consuming. Right. You know, we, we get a lot of organic, a lot of local. Um, all of our meat is fresh and fish is fresh and that, nothing's frozen. So like, you know what they're eating when they're eating here. So when it comes to flavor profile, they let us go with that. Um, you know, the sodium intake for the players, it's not a big deal if they're having that because it you know, helps them retain the water right. anyway. So like season your food, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then one of the big things that we did was the player spotlight. When uh, me and James started, we implemented that. And basically the player will sit down with them. We'll talk about foods that they like, or maybe like a restaurant they went to or a dish that they had from their childhood. And then we mimic that on the action station. And it pretty much just like developed like a, um, pretty much like a good vibe there where, you know, the players were able to talk to us a little bit more freely about what they wanted. And then I you get a game plan. Yeah, you get a game plan and, and, you, and then you put it to work. I love it. And they did right. it for the staff too, this off season. Yep. The guys made my chicken salt and boca. And you guys, that was actually one of the most popular ones. Right? Uh, look, the competition goes all across. <laughs> and I know you guys are competitive back there in the kitchen as well. You guys do the wing competitions every year. Yep. How, how big is that staff? How many people create all the food for the entire organization? So right now we have about uh, 15 County me and James. Um, we're actually looking for two more employees. Oh, so, okay. There we go. Um, you know, we do have a job posted, so if you do see it, you know, definitely apply. But um, in season, we're going to definitely need those two hands. But right now, 15. And, you know, these guys, like I said, are putting in 12 to 16 hour days. They're really pumping out a lot of food. Um, all of our chefs, I think we have three sous chefs. Um, and James is our senior executive chef, and then all of our cooks are amazing. So, like, it, it is really tight in there. I know, Fran, you've probably been in that kitchen. Yep. It's like a sort of like a galley kitchen, and for all the food that we're pumping out, but these guys get it done. I'm, I'm impressed every year. You know, I used to be a chef, so I, I know how it is, and I see these guys pumping out all the food, and it impresses me all the time. I look forward to breakfast every day, lunch every day. Uh, you know, we could go on and on. I'm going to throw the rundown out because Ross <laughs> I know, has like 10 more questions, but uh, you are a busy man. You mentioned you're understaffed, so I want to get you out of here. But before we let you go, I want to play a quick game. We'll do a little bit of a, a would you rather with you guys. We'll go okay. rapid yeah, fire, absolutely. and I'll ask some questions. Real quick, would you rather give up sugar or salt in your diet? Oh, sugar. Actually, I did give up sugar this okay. week. I'm going like a week with like very little sugar or, or little to none. So I would say sugar I can do. I feel like I could get rid of salt before I got rid of sugar. It's tough. I mean, I have ice cream with my daughters every night. I, I, it's for me, I get rid of salt. All right, would you rather give up cheese forever or chocolate forever? Eric, I'll go to you first. Ooh. Chocolate, I guess. Yeah, chocolate's yeah, gotta go out I, the door. I guess chocolate will have to go out the door. What? Why are we giving all these things up? You're, you're not making <laughs> this. I've got, there's a lot of questions. Fran, you're here. not making this fun. We're like giving up things. <laughs> no, uh, I would get rid of chocolate too. Like, you, 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 there's things in life you need the cheese for. Yes. Chocolate yeah. you can work around. All right, with that in mind, would you rather have a chocolate chip cookie or an oatmeal raisin cookie? Neither. Wow. Peanut butter cookie. Number one ranked cookie in the world. Peanut butter cookie. Peanut butter chocolate chip or just peanut butter? Either one. <laughs> I, I'd probably go peanut butter chocolate chip one and peanut butter two. Peanut butter cookies don't get nearly enough respect. They're the mm. offensive linemen of the cookie <laughs> family. We've had a lot of debates uh, out in the office about this, yeah. about how oatmeal, ra oatmeal raisin to me is underrated. Uh, I, I so like oatmeal raisin. I feel like oatmeal raisin has a really high ceiling. Yep but a pretty low floor too. I, you can have some <laughs> terrible oatmeal raisin cookies, yep. whereas chocolate chip cookie, like, it's either good or really good. Yep. Oatmeal raisin's either really good or, eh, I don't want it. All right, we talked about going to like a tailgate, we'll say holiday, big family dinner. You can either have the big entree, the big main course, or all the sides, which would you pick? Oh, that's probably your hardest question. Mm. I'm gonna go sides. Like, I'm just thinking Thanksgiving and all the sides. Yep. Like, I can probably do without the turkey. Okay. Well, now that he put it in that realm, I think that, yeah. now I'm going entree. I need the turkey. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can do without the green stuff or, like, what is it, cranberry circle things? Yeah. yeah I don't need <laughs> but that you got, like, mashed either. potatoes. Yeah. Got, I mean, well, mashed potatoes are good, yeah. filling, stuffing, yeah. but I'll go, I'll go the entree. I'll go the other way. I like it. All right, last one. Uh, you have to give up one for the rest of your life. I think I know your, your answer on this one, so I'm going to go to Eric first. Uh, coffee or beer? <laughs> I would say I would have to say beer because I live off of coffee, yep. especially during training camp. Like I'm doing like four cups a day at least. Yeah, I'd have to say coffee because I live off of beer. <laughs> <laughs> you say 
that though, but before the show, you caught up uh, with Kim, uh, Kim McDevitt and she made you a killer coffee. I don't like coffee at all. This is delicious. Yeah, it's a awesome. fat Batman latte with Cinnabon something. See, I don't even look at this as coffee. This is just like a nice, cold, uh, delicious drink. Okay. She's awesome too, by the way. Oh, Kim, Kim is amazing. Thank you all so much for joining us here Thanks. on Inside oh, Before I go, we want to give you our official height for, for oh. all the hype that you've given us. Yes! <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. All right, Saras, so I'm gonna let you finish your coffee. You can keep sipping, sipping this thing. Let's talk real quickly about what we've seen on the field, what we're expecting to see on the field moving forward. Quickly give me an elevator pitch. Who are you expecting to have a big camp? Camp and preseason. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go with Sidney Brown, the yep. rookie high third round pick from Illinois. First of all, tremendous off the field story that we've talked about, everybody should uh, read up on if they haven't. This guy reminds me, stylistically, I'm not saying he's that type of player, Troy Polamalu. Mm. He is going to become a fan favorite. Heat-seeking missile with the hair. I envision him in the, in the preseason games getting an interception, flying around, blowing running backs up. I think by the end of the preseason, fans are going to be excited about what Sidney Brown brings to this football team. He's really explosive. He's really yeah. sudden. That, that shows up right away. I will say, just going back to last year, James Bradbury was one of the, the stars of training camp a year ago. And on day one, on Wednesday, he had two pass breakups. He took away to throw to A.J. Brown, forced Jalen Hurts to pump fake and go the other way. James Bradbury was awesome last year, his first year in Eagles green. Now he's back with a new contract. I, I can't wait to see that secondary work. And I really didn't think that they would get him back. Yeah. That was a huge boost when Howie Rosen was able to re-sign him. All right, well, we saw Merrill Reese earlier in the show, and we did that tour of practice. We're, he's going to be joining us here next nice. week uh, on Legend. Inside Training Camp, presented by Independence Blue Cross. Thanks so much for joining us here, and we'll be back uh, next week here on Inside Training Camp, presented by Independence Blue Cross.